I want to talk about a topic beyond sight. As a young people, we have to understand there are thousands of opportunities beyond our sight that we explore as a young people. As a young people, we have to think beyond what we see. We have to think beyond what we can do. Beyond sight, as a young people, we have to understand and figure out what exactly we want to achieve. Beyond sight, we have to set a goal, break down this goal into objectives, and achieve what we want to achieve. Beyond sight, as a young people, we have to be ready to explore visible and invisible opportunities to achieve what we want to achieve. As a young people, beyond the optimism, beyond the ideas, we have to accept one reality. And the reality is talent is universal and opportunities are limited. Everyone has the ability to do incredible and extraordinary things if they have opportunities. So instead of us waiting for opportunities, we have to start thinking of how to create opportunities for ourselves. It is a known fact, if you can identify a single problem in your community and provide solution to that problem, it is a game changer for you. It will completely change your life, create opportunity for you, people around you, and even people far away. Considering the global trend of multinational corporations such as Facebook, Google, Twitter, Uber, AliExpress, and Amazon, we can understand that they are not started as a multinational corporation. Just some people in their communities trying to change a small problem or small uh, 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 initiative in their communities. In doing so, they are creating a multinational corporation. Most importantly, as a young people, we have to understand it's not always that we get opportunities through advantages. Sometimes we have to use our own disadvantage for our disadvantage. Using our disadvantage can help us understand who we are, what do we want to achieve, and how do we improve to achieve what we want to achieve. I want to share a story, my personal story, on how I use my own disadvantage for my advantage. Growing up, I have a lot of disadvantages. That every single opportunity, um, disadvantage, is enough to hinder my personal and professional development. However, I never allow this disadvantage to get into my head or prevent me from achieving what I want to achieve. There are two major disadvantages that always keep me on check and help me strengthen my personal and professional development. One of the disadvantages is academics. Growing up in rural communities, I attended the public school all my life. Considering how public education system became, you'll understand that I did not receive the quality education my peers received. This made me less competitive. So this disadvantage made me focus on everything I do, I have to ensure that I deliver a result. Yet again, another disadvantage that always keep me in check is when I joined the development sector, I am an introvert with zero experience in leadership at early stage. This gives me a lot of headache and make me have a lot of deficiencies in leading a team. I sat down and asked myself, now you are just an amateur and you will be leading a team of amateur. How do you lead this team? to achieve what, we want, what you want to achieve. I sat down, then I came up with the idea that I have to look for a mentor for myself. I met with Hamzat Bilawan and asked him, now I am volunteering for Connected Development and I, want to, I don't want to fail because I know I have this many disadvantages. If I fail now, that is the end of my career. He told me that you have to choose a good leadership style for you to achieve what you want to achieve. I go back, I make a lot of research about the leadership style. I come to conclusion that out of these three leadership styles, one, leading at the front, leading as a chain, and leading from the behind, which bits suit me as a person. I come to realize that as an introvert, 
leading at the front will be a serious problem for me. Leading as a chain, as an amateur, leading amateurs is still a problem. Then I decided to use leading from the behind. I put a lot of my team at the front, then I am leading them from the behind. Also, this helped me understand which kind of collaboration strategy to use. Basically, we have two types of collaboration. That is transactional collaboration and transformational collaboration. In transactional collaboration, person with the idea or the solution would put himself at the center, then different stakeholders of people interact with, this, with him through uh, on his system. So this kind of leadership would help you to build more followers. And this is not what I wanted. I want to create more leaders. In transformational leadership, um, trans transformational collaboration, the idea or the solution will be put at the center. Different stakeholders will be interacting with the system, including the initiator of the system. In this kind of leadership style, you will build more leaders, and this is what I wanted. I chose leading from the behind as a leadership style, and then transformational collaboration. And this may help me up to date. As a young people, it's not always think about opportunities. Some of the opportunities are just mere distraction, not every opportunities worth taking. Some of the opportunities will distract you from achieving what you want to achieve. I want to share another story with you, how prioritizing what I want helped me build a career. In 2017, I was just a volunteer with Connected Development and followed the money. I am receiving monthly 3,000 Naira data stipend. I received a call from an outsourcing company that I was shortlisted for a graduate uh, recruitment with GT Bank. So I have to report to Abuja for a training. I thought it was a scam. Few minutes later, a friend also called me that he received some similar phone call. And the person told him that he will send an email in regard to that. Just a few minutes later, he sent an email to us that we are to report to GT Bank Training School in Abuja. We went to training, uh, GT Bank Training School for a week-long training. While we are in the training, I don't feel like this is not what, what I wanted to do. I tell my friend, Idris, this is not what I wanted to do. I am feeling more comfortable doing follow the money. So we had that conversation. Upon our return from the training, two weeks later, Idris called me that he was posted to Duse Jigawa State. I congratulated him and told him that I am no longer interested in working with GT Bank. A good friend, he says that, you're right. You are not passionate about this work. You have to follow your passion. Four weeks later, I also received a phone call from the outsourcing company that I was posted to Taraba Jalingo State, um, Jalingo Taraba State, if I'm interested. I told him, no, I'm not interested. Two hours later, he called me again that I was, if I'm interested, I will be forced to Katana State. I said, no, I'm not interested. Without asking me what I wanted, he says, okay, since you want to post it to Damatru, we wait for the opportunity in Damatru for you to explore. Two months later, I received a phone call from the same outsourcing company that there is an opportunity in Damatru. I have to report to Damatru, GT Bank Damatru brand. I said, no, I'm no longer interested in the, in the work. The guy trying to convince me, young man, calm down. Do you got another job? I said, no. I don't have any job, but I'm not interested in the job anymore. He said, ah, uh -uh. you'll build a house. you get married with this money before you get another job. Please kindly reconsider your decision. I said, no. Then a few minutes later, after we hung up the phone, my father called me. He was trying to convince me that I should accept the offer. I was wondering how my dad received that information. Then I later realized that I met him as my next kin during, my, um, during the training. So I said, no, this is not what I wanted to do in my life. 
and my daddy is one of the most supportive dads in the world. He said, okay, fine, go do what you want to do. Then the person, that outsourcing company, called me angrily. That young man, I can assure you that you regret this your decision for the rest of your life. I thank him for his support. I said, yes, sir. I don't know what you're thinking, but I can assure you, even if what I believe in doesn't work, I will never regret this decision. Here we go. Two weeks later, I received an email from Follow the Money that they want to start a chapter across the state, but they want to test run in six states. And they consider me as one of the people that will pilot Follow the Money chapters. From there, with less than two years, I was promoted to regional lead coordinating northeastern part of Nigeria. I selected for Mandela Washington Fellowship. Upon my return, started my own organization. To cut the story short, our organization in 2020, 2019, it started in 2019. In 2020, African Union Commission selected our initiative as one of the 20, top 20 best innovation on democracy and governance. Also, Spindle in Germany selected our initiative as one of the 30 most inspiring digital innovation on democracy, on SDGs. In 2021, we got selected for African Civic Engagement Award. In 2022, out of 5,000 applications across the globe, our initiative selected as top 10 Global Recycling Award. I will leave you with the word of my mentor, Hamzat Bilawan. He once told me, if you believe in something and you believe it work, I repeat, if you believe in something and you believe it work, even whole world thing otherwise, just do it.